So the strength of an electrolyte depends on how much it dissociates into ions. So this is a, a topic from Chem 1A. So strong electrolytes dissociate completely. We have no intact molecules. All the ions separate. We have lots and lots of ions. The ions can carry charge. So electrolyte solutions can conduct electricity. So the strength of an acid depends on the equilibrium where it forms ions. So here we have our acid reacting with the base water, and it forms hydronium ions and some anion. A strong acid will ionize completely, just like a strong electrolyte ionizes completely. A weak acid only ionizes partially. It only forms a little bit of ions, and most of it's intact molecules. There are six strong acids, six important strong acids, um, and you should memorize them. And here they are. Hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydroiodic acid. So those are all the, the halogens except for fluorine. Fluorine's the smallest one, like the baby sister of that acid family, and she's not strong. And then nitric, perchloric, and sulfuric, I got nothing. You just got to memorize those. <laughs> if we look at these, we see that most of these acids just have a single hydrogen. And so then, of course, they can only lose one hydrogen. They lose one proton. And so they are called monoprotic acids. They have one ionizable proton. Diprotic acids have two. So sulfuric acid is H2SO4 it can lose two protons. Yes? For the diprotic and triprotic, doesn't it, don't they only lose one at a time? Like they do they, lose one at a time. You have to do it in steps. Yep. And so sulfuric acid is listed here as a strong <coughs> acid, but it's only with the dissociation of the first proton, the ionization. So when it loses one proton, that's strong, but then after that, it's weak. HSO, HSO4 minus is a weak acid, yep. And then you can also have triprotic acids. Can we think of a triprotic acid? Uh, phosphoric. phosphoric acid, H3PO4 or phosphorus acid, H3PO4, H3PO3, I mean. So let's look at the strong acids first. When we dissolve HCl into water, it completely ionizes. There are virtually no intact HCl molecules. It just separates into ions. And notice we got to qualify that we say virtually. Because can we say that there's not even one HCl molecule? Well, you said HCl is a gas, right? Well, yes, but when it, but gases can be dissolved in water. And so we say virtually, it doesn't necessarily mean zero, but practically zero, right? So when we write this equation, we use a single arrow pointing to the right, which means that this goes completely to the right. So if we're looking at a one molar HCl solution and we want to know what the concentration of hydronium ions is, all of the HCl produces hydronium ions and chloride ions, and so the concentration of hydronium is the same as the HCl that we started with. So the hydronium ion concentration is one, okay? HF is a weak acid, hydrofluoric acid. When it dissolves in water, it does ionize, forms some hydronium ions and some fluoride ions, but there are also a lot of HF molecules that are intact. And so when we write the equation for this, we use an equilibrium arrow showing the reaction going in both ways. This indicates it's a partial ionization. Mm -hmm. How does, um, because if HF isn't dissolved, then it's not an acid and it's a gas. How mm -hmm. does it stay in there? Is it like well, how does oxygen dissolve in water? It's just dissolved in the water. 
I mean, the pressure above does have something to do with it, but but gas molecules can be dissolved in water. So something can dissolve in water but not disassociate? Yes. Yeah. So, like sugar. What does sugar do when it dissolves in water? Well, it makes the water sweet, yes. <laughs> but do the sugar molecules ionize? No. No. They're, they're, they just separate from the other sugar molecules. Because they're covalently bonded. They're covalently bonded to each other. And the HF here is covalently bonded also. And so the HF molecules can remain intact while still being dissolved in the water. So is hydrochloric acid also covalent? Hydrochloric acid, well, HCl is covalently bonded. But when it dissolves in water, all of it ionizes. It all comes apart. And we'll, we'll talk later about why some acids are strong and some are weak. So if we look at a one molar HF solution, this is a weak acid. If we start with one molar mole per liter of HF, at equilibrium, the concentration of H3O plus is going to be less than one molar, right? Because this is not going to go all the way. It's an equilibrium, and there's a constant for that. So acid strength depends on the attraction between the conjugate base and the hydrogen ion relative to the attractions of these ions to water. Um, so the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. So here with a strong acid, we can look at the equation here, the, the acid reacting with water, this A minus is the conjugate base, right? That's the conjugate base to this acid over here. So if this is a strong acid and this um, reaction goes completely over here, what that says is this base has a very weak attraction for the hydrogen ion. The hydrogen ion is more attracted to the water, and the base is just kind of left without it. Yes? So then the chlorine, it's because it's the most electronegative, and it has the stronger ion. Yes, that is part of it. That fluorine. HF is a, is a weak acid rather than a strong acid because the fluorine is more electronegative and holds on to the hydrogen ions stronger than ClBr or I. If we have a weak acid where we have um, this going in both ways in equilibrium here, then we have a stronger attraction between the A- and the H+. And so the A minus is able to hold on to the, to the hydrogen ions. And so we have some of these molecules that are intact and some that are ionized. So the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. So the acid ionization constant, Ka, is an equilibrium constant. So there's chapter 16. We learned about equilibrium constants. Ka is the equilibrium constant for the ionization of an acid. It's a way to quantify how strong a weak acid is. So if we look at this equation of this chemical reaction of the acid reacting with water to form hydronium ions and um, this anion, the conjugate base, um, we can do it that way, or what's simpler to look at is to just look at H+. We understand that there's water present, right? AQ, 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 all of this is happening in water. Um, but here, we don't really care about the water molecule that's holding onto the hydrogen ion. You know, it's a babysitter, any, anyone would do. Um, and so we're just focusing on the hydrogen ion. But these two chemical equations are describing exactly the same thing. So the equilibrium constant for this, Ka, is 
for the top one is the hydronium ion concentration times the A minus concentration divided by HA, or looking at this second equation, H plus times A minus over HA. And so we often just use H plus because it's less stuff to write. So if Ka is small, that means that the reaction does not proceed to the right very far, it does not ionize very much, and it's a weaker acid. A larger Ka ionizes more completely and is stronger. Any questions? Here's a table from your book that you may need to refer to because um, you'll have to look up these acid ionization constants. Those are not something you memorize, right? Um, and so these are ones that you might need on homework problems, the names, the formulas, structural formulas. You may or may not need that, but the reactions and the KAs. And then we'll talk about what a PKA is later. Um, but we're going to do some problems, and I've just gone ahead and typed these onto the slides so we didn't have to keep jumping back and forth. But a lot of times the problem will not give you the Ka value. You have to go look it up. Now on an exam, it would either be provided in the question or I'd give you a table like this in your exam so that you could look it up. Don't memorize Ka values. And don't ask me if you should memorize Ka values. So consider three generic weak acids, HA, HB, and HC. The images shown represent the ionization of each acid at room temperature. Which acid has the largest Ka? What are we looking for? A large Ka means it ionizes more, right? So if we look at this one, it looks like only one molecule has ionized. And here we've got four, and here there are two. So it must be B that ionizes more. It has a higher Ka, it's a stronger acid. It's not strong, but it's stronger than the others. Mm -hmm. That's an excellent question. How do you determine the acid ionization constant for weak acids? Well, basically the way you determine any equilibrium constant. You need to know um, either the equilibrium concentrations of all the species or the initial concentrations in one of the equilibrium concentrations. Now, one of the products is going to be hydronium ion which is related to pH, pH measures that, and so we can actually measure hydronium ion concentration by measuring the pH of the solution. Consider these two acids and their Ka values, which acid is stronger? HF is stronger because the acid dissociation constant is larger. <laughs> 